Yo, what is up? Oh, I miss y'all so much. Okay, so we are on um, episode seven. And um, so for today, we're doing Judas and the Black Messiah. So let's get into the little details about that. All right, we got the writer and director, Shaka King. And uh, we got Daniel Kula playing Fred Hampton and Lakeith Stanfield playing William O'Neill. They also played in the movie together. I'm pretty sure you know. Uh, get out. So, yeah, let's get into it. All right. So, um, so this movie um, pretty much is inspired by true events. Is going is a Black Panther movie. So, kind of go into our whole, um, you know, uh, African American February Black History Month. So, um, however, with this movie, it's going over Fred Hampton, um, his like little snapses of his life prior to you know, we know what history happened when he's murdered or whatnot. Um, it really, actually really kind of go into the tale of O'Neill, the guy who, the FBI informer, I think it's more following his story. Yeah, it's pretty much more following his story. But um, the topic is very interesting. So um, let's let's start off from the beginning. We're going to work our way down, you know, on some, some different ideas and things that came up um, during this movie. All right, so in the beginning of the movie, uh, our boy Bill O'Neill, William O'Neill is his real name. He is trying to steal a car. So he goes into this place and acts like he's a FBI infor- uh, FBI agent. And um, he tries to steal a car, but ends up getting pulled over by the police. And um, we see, I forgot his name, Roy Mitchell. Roy Mitchell and got him in the interrogation room. And... He just talks to him, tell him like you got some some things you gotta account for. You get you're gonna get 18 months for stealing the car, then you're gonna get five years for impersonating a, a FBI agent. So he's like, or you could go home. And that's it. that was the end of that scene. He I guess he chose to go home because next time we see him, he's in a class taught by Fred Hampton. So I guess he chose to be a informant against the Black Panther Party which is crazy to me, but especially at that time. So would you put your life and will be on the line and not snitch? <laughs> <laughs> it's a question. <laughs> would you do what he did? Well, I, well, okay. It's past snitching. Like he had to build up information. So, you know, he going undercover to be a snitch. So, um, that I don't know, like you did the crime, just go ahead and do the time, honey, because I didn't understand. Well, I think what uh, for the most part with um, Bill at the the true, you know, during that time he was seventeen years old when this happened. Okay, so that's what we got to keep in mind. He was a, he was still a kid, so to him it's like all right, whatever, whatever I got to do to go home because during that scene, you know, when he asked him like. Um, you know, or were you sad when Malcolm X died or Martin Luther King died or whatever, whatever. So to him, I mean, you know, he, he was a young kid, probably wasn't really, I'm not gonna say necessarily educated, but probably just wasn't really, you know, following all that going on. Like the street's hard out here. I'm trying to do what I got to do to survive type stuff. So with that mentality to him, it's like, whatever, like they not feeding me. So it doesn't matter. Like, but um, me personally, no, I ain't got time for that. Like, I know what the consequences of, I mean, is of my actions. So not about to go do, you know. But then again, like I said, with him, he didn't really understand what the Black Panther was. It seemed like, you know, because when he went back the first time to go tell uh, Roy, you know, give him some information, whatever. He was like, he's not really, they're not terrorists. They're terrorizing me. <laughs> So it's like he really wasn't, I guess, he didn't really get what was happening. He was kind of being manipulated in a sense. Well, Roy Mitchell asked him those questions just so he could see where his head at and how much black pride he actually had. So he was he was testing him. That's why he asked the question about how you feel about Michael Max dying or uh, Martin Luther King dying. So, but yeah, you are dealing with a kid and the kid would do almost anything to go home. So, and that's, that's just it really uh, but as far as any of us doing that especially now that we know what 
what's going on back then and the struggles that everybody went through. I don't think anybody would snitch and be an informant. And that the police, the FBI lies. They lie all the time. Like you go do this, like okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We will, we'll, um, we'll, we won't put you in jail for these charges, and then they come with something else. Like what the heck? Yeah. Anybody got time for that mess? Yeah. So he he infiltrates the Black Panther Party. He becomes one one of the people in the party. They call start calling him Comrade. So I give him uh, give him nicknames. Call call him Wild Bill. But uh, then the story kind of switched over to like Fred Hampton and things that he was doing. So Fred Hampton was getting other parties that he seen that was marginalized and and you know just kept down by the man, I guess you could say. <laughs> so they all had the same common kind of enemy, pretty much. Right. I w- I was more shocked when he went and got the the white group, where they called themselves Patriots, and the way he, that he talked to them, and they really started to look up to him, like it believed in him. I, I honestly never knew a Rainbow Coalition really existed. I've heard of them in other senses, you know, but not not during the civil rights time. Like he he got together Puerto Rican and white people and black people together. Well, you know, wrong, when when somebody is doing you wrong, wrong is wrong. You know what I mean? And it was like regardless of our race you know we still poor we still broke we still out here struggling we still can't feed our kids so we we got you know it's like i said they they had the same enemy you know in common so it's like whatever we can't do this alone so if we team up together then maybe we can accomplish something yeah yeah i i mean that's what he said to the patriots too you know it's like y'all being kept down by the same people that keep us down you know they they didn't want police in their neighborhood. Y'all get beat up by police just like we do, which I find that kind of hard to believe at the time, because <laughs> we talking about the sixties. Like, was cops really beating up beating up white people like that? Well, remember they like country though. They were like country people. Yeah, they were poor too. And and you we talking about the city of Chicago. So it's like I can see it. I can, I mean I can see that happening. Uh, I find that very debatable, but <laughs> yep. So he got all these people together. You know, he started making like real moves. He on the steps of the like the Capitol building, uh, trying to get justice for one of the people, uh, one of the groups in the coalition, and uh, said they were shot by police officers, and uh, they actually kept captured a police officer and brought him to other police officers and expected justice. So. I, I think he was doing good things. Like I, I've heard of many people from the Black Panther Party, but Fred Hampton is one of those. It's a little known story, I guess. So it was it was real good to me. But okay, so later on in the movie, Fred Hampton was arrested for stealing seventy dollars worth of ice cream. Yeah, they they had to find something to. You know, Hoover pretty much was like, he got to (laughs) go. So they had to find something to pull him in. So that was the little, you know, BS charge they came up with. Um, Of all things, though, $70 worth of ice cream. And $70 back then was like, okay, about $300, I guess. Well, it's it's like the insult to injury. You know what I mean? Like, all right, we about to lock you up. And not only we locking you up, you can tell your friend you locked up over stolen ice cream. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's crazy. I think he did like 18 months for seventy dollars worth of ice cream, but I think it's like you couldn't find anything else. You, you couldn't find anything. Seventy dollars worth of ice cream. That's it. Yeah. I mean, no, it's, it was just insane. The the stint that J Edgar Hoover and the FBI would go to to get these people, you know, and take them down. Right. And for those who don't don't know who Hoover was, you know, he he spent 48 years as the director of the FBI. All right. Like that. That's Nixon endorsement. You know, <laughs> like it, it always seemed that people who hate themselves tend to do the most pain to others. And this guy had it out for civil rights organizations like liberal anti-war things like organizations like he I I don't know this man. He calls a lot of 
issues, you know, like he was really investigating Mal- uh, uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, like they were on his list. Like people we see today as those who paved the way for, you know, equal rights, but to him, they were the enemy. Like he didn't want no, you know what I'm saying? Like what, well, sort of kind of what we are today, you know, he didn't want this. This is not the future he wanted to see. But this man was crazy. I don't know. So since we on Jay Edgar Hoover, we're going to skip to one of these questions I got. So what do you think his problem was with like black people and Black Panther and the Black Panther Party? Because I couldn't figure it out. I mean, I don't watch plenty of movies with Jay Edgar Hoover. I don't watch the Hoover movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio played him. And I just couldn't figure it out. It's, it's just that thought process back then, like these people well he and and you know those then were you know they're raised on this thing that you are superior and these people don't they're not your equal so he in order to be the best that you know for his people then i have to stand hard and true to disbelief that you know we are superior they anything they're doing is they're trying to mess up or what we got, or, or you know, what I'm saying like black people, like the problem. It's like, yo, calm down, guy, calm down. Well, if I had to put my finger on something, I would say that he felt like black people was just dangerous. Like he, he didn't go after the KKK like he went after the Black Panther Party. So I think he he just was scared of them, but felt like they, we was dangerous. Scared of him, he wasn't nowhere near him. That's <laughs> you know what I mean, he chilling. Like when he saw Black Panther the black panther party and any other black group he felt like they they was dangerous they could cause harm you know they're a hate group they spilling hate you know when really they was really fighting for trying to fight for equal rights but he's he seen hate he's seen crime you know but i wouldn't even give him that that element of ignorance i felt like he knew what it was he just didn't want them to come together and overpower the system which is the white man during that time. He didn't want the system overpowered. Well, that's what everybody, uh, that's what they was talking about. That was the words that uh, was spilled out. We're going to take over this government. We're going to take back our freedoms and all this and all that. So that was, that was the main thing. So, I mean, I, I you kind of have to give, give him that kind of ignorance too. And the fact that he was probably slightly racist, of course. But slightly? Yeah, that was probably more so a lot racist, but yeah, he had not only he's just racist, he's he was ignorant. He wasn't even worried about the mafia as much as he was worrying about the black organization. Like that's the point. Like it it, it, it this man, I don't know, like it, it makes me angry. Mm. <laughs> so uh after Fred Hampton got locked up, you know, the Black Panther Party of Illinois kind of went astray. You know, membership went down and Seemed like people started doing a lot of crazy stuff around there. So our boy Com- Comrade Jimmy Palmer, played by uh, I forgot his name, but he was in In and Out. I mean, um, All Day in the Night, and he was also in uh, Moonlight. So he walked in to like some shop and seen like cops harassing uh, four black guys, and he just pulled out a gun and started shooting like it wasn't nothing. So. I wonder if he would have did that if Fred Hampton, Fred Hampton was around. Well, I, I think he was just frustrated. It's like, we're tired. Ty- like, why are you here? Like, but unfortunately, him doing that kind of at made, gave the police the excuse to be in the neighborhood more and start to harass the Black Panther Party more because now it's like, oh, y'all police killers. So, mm-hmm, we knew y'all was up to no good. Yeah, he did give him an excuse, but... I think his wife, he, he, I think he called himself protecting his community against police officers, but I don't think that's the, that's the correct way to do it, especially in that day and time, you know? He went in there and just started shooting. He's like, y'all need to get out of here and just pull out a gun and start shooting. But I want to know, like, what was it? What did he think was going to be the end result of all this? Well, I mean, there was one of him, and it was like, what, two, three pro- police officers? So I'm sure he knew he was about to die, get, at least get shot. I don't know about that, but he should have known he was getting shot. Like, or maybe he felt like he was going to scare him, scare the police. I don't know, but. Yeah, that, that was kind of crazy to me that somebody would go in there and do that if they're they going to just walk out alive. But sometimes you get fed up. 
you know you get fed up with stuff and it's like you don't even think about the consequence afterwards it's just like i am tired of this like i am over this like y'all can't keep doing this there's no point in you doing this and it's i don't know you just act and just hope the reaction ain't too bad <laughs> so the gunfight at headquarters where they had a whole little gunfight out there oh yeah 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 like, that scene and just just from what I've seen in the movie, it seemed like old girl from the Black Panther Party started that shit. Well, keep in mind, the cops was out there harassing people. Like, he out there cracking jokes, thinking he a whole Dave Chappelle out there. And it's like, yo, what are you doing? And they, they were literally standing outside of the Black Panther, you know, their little headquarters or whatever. And they, you know, pretty much they were staring in the pot. They were staring in the pot, so... They just get, they just poured in the um <laughs> they just turned it up a little bit they turned the stove up a little bit when she came to the window with the gun and all that but I mean every time they did something the reaction was even worse because they went and burnt down the place yeah I mean he was out there sitting there saying like y'all don't come out we coming in but, but like why are you there in the first place anyway you know so. He he kind of started, but as soon as she opened that window and showed that she got a gun, that's when they f- went in the full on assault mode right there. Because you gotta remember, these people were willing to die for their cause, and that's the thing. Like I feel like nowadays we'll raise money for the cause, you know, we'll go march for the cause, but a lot of us ain't willing to die for no cause, and they were willing to die for what they believed in. So I think that's the reason why we see is like, okay, that's you cray cray, honey. That was a suicide mission. Yeah, but uh, that was like kind of really suicidal. So then she pointed the gun at them and then they just automatically start shooting. Once they seen a boy, um, Bill, while well, Bill on the roof, who was slit, <laughs> he wasn't trying to be in that no part snake, of bro. He a snake. He was trying to get the fuck out of there. He a whole snake out here, but I mean, I mean, I, I didn't expect nothing less from them. Nothing less. Like, they about to have a gunfight with the police. I'm getting the hell out of here. So, uh, so they started shooting when they seen him on the roof. And then um, he miraculously got out of the back door and got the hell on. But they ain't no getting arrested, getting their ass beat. But my thing is, how do these cops just burn down the building? Because they cop. They do what they want. No. They no. do what they want. I guess back then they had a lot more freedom to do whatever the hell they, they did, and so, that's and that's what some of these cops now tend to think is back then. Like, okay, hold up, brother. Well, imagine somebody doing that today. Imagine somebody doing that today. I can see it. I I can't see it. Like too many people got cameras. They got phones. They got everything. You know, they were recording everything. Everything okay, but we got we got people recording black people getting shot and still things don't happen. Yeah, but it's you know we got documentation that things weren't things weren't handled the way it's supposed to be. But it's okay if somebody's murdered in their own home, so it don't even matter. Yeah, but you know people things happen nowadays because of outrage. There's so much outrage out here in the streets that they they are forced to do something. But you didn't you didn't okay. So if if that's the case, think about it like that. So the uh, they had like police officers shot you know what i mean and that's why they were out there pushing applying that pressure to the black panther party you know at their headquarters so if you look at it that way then i guess they did have sense to be in there because they were like okay y'all doing too much y'all over here um what what's the word y'all up here like creating these these neighborhood terrorists that want to kill black i mean want to kill cops or whatever you know so that's how that's how they're treating the situation so it's like okay well we burn down your headquarters i guess you won't be recruiting anybody won't nobody be coming here but the community did pull together and help rebuild it which was great and that was beautiful i love seeing that yeah that was that was real that was real i mean i wasn't expecting everybody to come out of the woodworks because you know you could get blamed for stuff like that it's like you got these cops in our neighborhood shooting us and all this stuff this is your fault you know i think some people actually did that back in the day like blame the black panthers for just the police being out there themselves in the first place so well the police i mean whether you're black panther or not you were still black so the police weren't your friend anyways all right so all right, then later on we see Jake 
Winters. He finds out that his boy Jimmy Palmer had died in the hospital, you know, and more than likely was killed by the police when he was being transferred to another hospital. So he goes and he tries to find like what what happened. So when he went to the hospital to visit Jimmy uh, Jimmy Palmer, he seen a friend and he just said what's up to and really it wasn't really nothing. He just seen a guy that he knew. But once he found out his friend died, he went to that dude's house and tried to find out what was going on. And uh, did he know anything? And dude ended up calling the police on him. Well, he was at the man's house with a whole gun in his jacket. Yeah, but like, I don't, it wasn't there for him. But why Why you come, Why are you asking me a question with a whole gun? I don't know who you're here for. He did. He asked the question like, well, he's like, I just want to know what happened to my friend. Just talk to me. He was like, brother, like, I ain't your brother. So <laughs> yeah, he was kind of defensive. So I, I kind of think he might have had something to do with it, or at least know what happened. And he had nothing to do. With what pretty much what that man was trying to tell him. Look, I am not about to get in between this. Like, you see what they did to your boy. Like, I'm not about to give you no information. I don't want to be no parts of this. Leave me alone. I just want to live my life. I'm not ready to die tonight or tomorrow. That's pretty much what that man was saying. It's not like he was a part of it. It was just like I'm about to mind my own business. Like that's I don't know. Like I'm, I'm not be part. I'm not about to be a part of that. Yeah, yeah, but still, he didn't have to call the police on him because calling the police on a black man in the '60s is a lot worse than calling the police on a black guy today. I mean, true, and he did say the man had a gun, so he kind of knew that was it. Because yeah, that means the police was going to come full. For- but again, he probably didn't want the boy coming back to his house. Asking no questions. Well, of course he ain't gonna come back to your house because somebody <laughs> called the police on him, telling him he got a gun. He dead. Yeah, so. he dead. He gone. So he got into a shootout with the police. I guess it was like near his uh, near dude's house, and he just started shooting shooting the shit out of the police. And he had a chance to get away, but he stopped. And then he went uh, went back and just to kill some more uh, police officers. So, but could you really get away from that? Like he like once you shot one cop, that's it, honey. You you not they're gonna they're looking for you forever. Yeah, but it's not like they have video or anything like that. They know who he was. The guy knew who he was. The guy who was the one yeah, who called the police on, so they knew. That's true. But shit, you probably live to fight another day at least. At least, but he decided to go back and like kill other police officers just for the fun of it. But yeah. I mean, I don't think for the fun of it, it was just like it was. He might as well like. There's no point in running, running to hide, and they then they like, you know, they're chasing you, hunting you like an animal. Like, forget it. It's done. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess you're right. I mean, dying there and actually being on the run. I mean, I mean, what what would you do? You gonna sit there? You gonna die? If I don't shot a cop during that time period, yeah. Ain't no point. Like, because my thing is, who helped you? Like, I understand, you know, you can go from here to here, but who giving you my, you got your family, you got to leave. Or what, they might be coming at your mom's house. You saw they was ha- harassing his mom and things like that. So they might come to your mom's house looking for you. Who knows what they're going to do to her? Probably, you know what I'm saying? There's no telling because they looking for you. So they're going to try to hurt your family that's still there. Your mom not going to run with you. Yeah. So it's like, in order to end this, they going they want me. So whatever. We'll just handle it until it's done. Yeah, I guess he uh, he knew he signed his own death ticket. It was done, exactly. It was over. Yeah, so, okay. On to the next. Uh, later on in the movie, we see our boy, the snake, uh, Bill O'Neill, Wild Bill. He came at to, um, he came at to Fred Hampton with some C4, talking about blowing up the Capitol and all that stuff like that. And then we see that he was wearing a wire this whole time. You think they they told him to do that or he did that on his own? Because they ain't depicted in the movie. Yes. Um, so I keep in mind that O'Neill is a young is a young, young male, you know what I'm saying? And keep in mind that he's broke because he was robbing and stealing and getting all sorts of trouble prior to, you know, this this you know, running into um Roy. So he'll do anything for money. And unfortunately, that's how some people are. Their loyalty can be paid, can be bought. And also I had read somewhere that um, O'Neill actually really looked up to Roy. Like 
he believed like he really trusted him you know yeah, what I mean? They said that in the movie too. Yeah, so he really trusted this man. So if this man is saying, look, I'm going to look out for you. I'm going to give you some money, do this X, Y, Z. Then it was like, eh, I do need some money. And he do keep coming through with this money. So I guess. And he was just thinking for him. He wasn't thinking at all. You know, I can't even say he was thinking for himself. He wasn't thinking at all. So you don't think he ever felt bad about the things that he was doing? I think some parts he did. But the money made sense. Was the Black Panther paying him? No. Or was the FBI paying him? Yeah. So his loyalty went where the money went. Well, he only got $200,000. Equi- what's equivalent to $200,000 today? You know, I dang. That's a lot of money back then, though. Well, I mean, sure, that's a lot of money right now. Well, the, let me the, tell you. <laughs> from what the movie said, it, it's equivalent today to $200,000. You can't get $200,000 to just be straight. For life, that's not life changing money. Well, it's like for a criminal, it is. It's like altering money, but it's not like you can't you can't get two hundred thousand dollars and send on your ass for the rest of your life. I mean, pretty much that was his job. He 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 got picked up off the street as some kid, and pretty much was employed by the FBI to be an informant. Yep. I mean, he had a whole government job. All right. So when they brought the little vial thing to him so he could put Fred Hampton to sleep like you think you would did that um I mean if you was like Bill O'Neill like for real I I I wouldn't have because my thing is especially if I don't if you know I'm doing all this stuff whatever at that point I probably wouldn't have because my thing would be all right if you 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 want this man about to get arrested however you want to murder him so if you're gonna murder him, like murder the man fighting, yo. Like that's that's some dog stuff right there. Like yeah, that, I, I can't that was the lowest point right there because he was about to go to jail. He really you see him talking to uh, Roy Mitchell, and the dude was about to go back to jail. But they was like jail is temporary. You heard jail go over jail jail is temporary. It'll make some black people stars and you know, best selling authors and stuff like that. But he was about to go back to jail, but now they want to kill him. Like, I why would you want any parts of that? So I don't I don't care how long, like if you were snitching out, you gotta have felt something for these people that you spend so much time around. You gotta felt something. But it's a job. Yeah, but you gotta respect these people, regardless. I mean, I I do feel like he was. I I felt like he he you know he did do some good. Like when they were rebuilding the thing, it was like oh he led that. You know what I'm saying? So he did feel pride doing some of the stuff he did and he probably did do some good stuff with them you know but at the end of the day the paycheck was for him to be a snitch his loyalty was to roy mitchell and and that's how he followed on well that's that is just i don't know that's disturbing to me you know because like these people took you under the, their wing and watched over you and stuff like that no matter whether they were paying you or not you should have felt something but you could see on his face that he felt some kind of way about doing it. And then for for them that want to come in there and kill a man in his sleep is ridiculous to me anyway. That's cowardly. But why you think black people don't trust it? That's why I say it gets on my nerve. Like, why you think we do not we do not trust the legal system? We do not trust police. We do not trust any of it. Like history, at, like even after even after even in history has proven the mess is not equal. The it the law ain't for us it ain't to protect us at all it was it was never designed to protect us yeah i guess that's true so um that's it for the first segment you got some questions and stuff like that for the next one um just a little bit of detail well we're just going over some comparison and stuff all right so we're gonna get ready to go to this next segment y'all stay tuned and we will and we're back segment two all right so um segment two i want to start like doing some comparison with this name right so judas and the black messiah is the name of the movie um what do you do you don't you like the play on words with that yeah like because <laughs> yeah. he is a judas <laughs> like straight up he is a judas if i ever seen one in my life and for those who need to run down the story, I mean, um, so Judas, 
portrayed Jesus, right? His Messiah, you know, um, he identified Jesus to the Jewish authority. We all know the stories, capture, all that, um, all that bad stuff. Um, so with this, Bill kind of did it with a drink when he added that stuff in there. Also drawing of the, the layout of the place where they were going to be, the apartment. Um, I, man, it's kind of, I, I do feel like both of them probably did feel bad, but it's, that's some crazy portrayal, man. Like people who took you in on their wings, people who saw you as one of them and you just like, yeah, I know you're about to die and I I'm sorry. Like that's crazy. But hence the term Judas and the black Messiah. Cause isn't that what Judas did? To it is. Jesus back then? They took him, Ju Jesus took him under his wing and made him one right, of that's them what I'm saying. Like that. Right. So I think the name correlates like the story and the, the message in it, you know? I messed, messed up, bro. Yeah, so it, it was it was perfect. Perfect name to me. So what else? What else? What else? So, um, all right. So those who, um, all right, I, everybody, please go to twinkleberry.com, all right? Sign up for the newsletter. All right, so those who uh, subscribe to the newsletter, you'll be the first to get updates on the newest movies, upcoming events, and, you know, so much more. Also, you do, like, when you sign up, you have the opportunity, you know, you can um, ask questions, comments on upcoming movies, and things that we can include in our, um, our episodes or whatever. So we do have a comment from a listener um, in regards to this movie. And pretty much the comment... Um, Okay, uh, they felt that black people oppress themselves more than the system or uh, any person could. How do you feel about that? What are your thoughts? Yeah, because some of the biggest snakes out here could be like your friends, maybe some family. You mean your black friends? Yeah, your black possibly, family. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't see like black people tear down other black people from doing positive things. Like it's it's, it's crazy to me. It's crazy. So, yeah, I mean, that is true. They could be your biggest oppressors, biggest oppressors. Either you doing something good, something bad, or just something that they don't, they don't, they don't see as right. Or they, so, something they can't get with, really, you know? I, I don't agree. I, I definitely don't agree. I feel like it's not, it's, it's not the black people. It's, at the end of the day, it's still, it's still the government. Is still, for example, like in this whole situation, we can we can blame we can blame O'Neill for what happened. However, we also gotta look at where O'Neill was coming from. The system, the the white corrupt system, was what made put O'Neill in a spot where he wasn't able to get good education. That he wasn't able to feed him, so he had to go into a life of crime and do all this crazy stuff. So because the government created this system where he's out here having to do what he needed to do to, to live, then that made him into this, that gave him this mentality that I need to do what I need to do to survive. And I can't just say like, okay, it's just black people. It's not necessarily just black people. It's just the system that we live in that makes people do things, react certain ways. No, I, I mean, I got to disagree with that because he, he didn't have to snitch. That was a choice. And that could it could be him. All this all this stuff out here acting like black people are oppressed and you know uh, getting killed by cops. One day that could have been him. That could have been him. What if he would have got caught by some cops? What what if he would have got caught by in that shootout that he ended up leaving? He would have he probably either got killed or he would got put in jail just like everybody else did. But see, it's okay. So it's the whole thing is 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 the. You gotta think about this the slave mentality. Okay, so think about this. Let's say you're 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 a slave, you out there and 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 there's a missing slave, and the master come and asks and everybody, all right, where does man go? Where he go, where he go? But if you tell me where he goes, I'm gonna do XYZ for you. Whoever come and tell me. You tell me you ain't gonna do it? Like, oh, this is extra food for my daughter, or or this might be something for my wife. You tell me you wouldn't do it? Well, well, you bringing like family to his different. okay. So he, he was a, a young single. But so man. he was his own family. And, That's the point. And, he was the only thing he had to worry about was himself. So if this is going to help myself, then I'm going to do it. No, like you said earlier, you did the crime. 
do the time. That don't is turn, true. Don't turn snitch on people that's out here do, uh, doing good, trying to help your black ass. I mean, that is th- that is true. However, however, keep in mind he was young, probably uneducated. Because the issue was not good schooling. Because the money wasn't going into the inner city of Chicago. The money wasn't going in, you know, there. So this is the, he was a product of what the government did. You take money away, and these people ain't being educated. What you expect for them to do? Yeah. How I'm, you expect for them to think? How you expect for them to react? Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with that, you know. But I'm disagreeing with his choice. His choice was to turn snitch and turn evidence against his fellow man because he didn't see any other at that point he didn't see any other option well you better you better make an option you better do you better do something other than turn in your own brothers and sisters out here in the street fighting for equality for people that look just like you true but it's who got him first if the black panther would have got hold of him first because it seemed like he did like doing some of the stuff they were doing he was kind of with it but unfortunately the fbi got him first yeah that's true I guess it was, it was the fact of the matter who got to him first. Hey, who's going who's going to get into this young boy's ear and manipulate him and drive to steer him in the direction that they wanted to, you know? And the FBI got him to him first. And you know, and at the end of the movie, um when they were showing the lot the actual um documentary, well, the actual interview that he had done, um O'Neill said that um he was part he felt like he was part of the struggle. And he was like, well, I'll let, you know, whatever this this interview dictate, you know, what people think of me, whatever. He history. He's going to let history speak for it. Right. And he was like, he was part of the struggle. And me personally, I felt where he was coming from with that because it, it, it we can say, we can say in hindsight, out of, outside of his shoes, he didn't, he didn't, shouldn't have done it. He shouldn't have did it. But in it. You have to think about his situation at that time, his age, his education, what was going on, his family history, what he was doing for a living. Like to him, that he probably he felt he justified it. Like my back was against the wall, and this is what I had to do. Yeah. And unfortunately, it probably wasn't the best thing he could. I mean, it wasn't the best thing he could have done. He could have done way much more stuff, but. It was like, it's either him or me. Because remember, there was times when he wanted to stop and pretty much was like, well, remember, you did X, Y, Z and you still got time. So they still holding that thing over his head like, we not done with you. So do what we tell you to do and then you'll be straight. Yeah, but he shouldn't have gotten into it in the first place. He shouldn't have. But like I said, he was a kid at 17. Where was his parents? You know what I mean? Yeah, we did not want to see this man mama at all. So yeah, I guess. But uh, later on in life, I guess in hindsight to him too, he felt bad about it because soon as it, it aired his so-called dirty laundry on the interview and stuff like that, he killed himself. Um. Um. And but see, I, I feel like he was a trouble guy. Um. He even after the raid. He continued to work as an informant with the FBI, you know, still pretend to be this Black Panther. Um, well, I don't know. It, could it be, is it pretend or was he actually, I don't know, whatever. I, that's teacher's I, own. I guess you could say he was. Teacher's own on that one. But um, but he ended up getting, um, his cover ended up getting blown. He had to go to witness protection, moved all the way to California, changed his name. But then he ended up coming back to Chicago. And he came back to Chicago and lived in Chicago. So my thing is, you know, these people that are like, oh, he's this, that, X, Y, Z. When the man came back, why wasn't he dealt with? So it's like people always got so much crap to say, but ain't nobody really willing to do the... Nobody really... Everybody got all this stuff to say, but nobody really willing to put in the work to do it. Or like, all right, you violated code. This is done for you. But nobody's doing... Nobody that didn't, The man went back to Chicago. Look what he did. Well, how you know they just didn't want to kill another black man? That could have been the case too. That's a good enough reason. They ain't Black Panthers ain't finna go out here and just kill another black man just because he snitched and all that. Well, then, then, then we shouldn't be worried about it. What do you mean? Like he did what he did. He felt some kind of way about it. Obviously, even after all these years, because mind you, it wasn't like he just killed himself like a year or two later. After all those years later, and he. 
actually was able to sit and listen and think about that, and the world is going to know about this, like no, he, he was, this was nineteen ninety, right? Was, uh, That's what I'm saying. When the when the interview aired, right? The interview aired, he killed himself. So, well, I mean, his wife claimed it was an accident. Who knows? But yeah, he felt bad. So that brings me to one of my questions: mm-hmm. What is your price to be a snitch? <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's levels to this question. Uh, like, I mean what? Everybody, everybody, I'm pretty sure all our listeners don't heard this before. Everybody got a price. Everybody. I don't care who you are. Everybody got a price. So what's your price to be a snitch? It, uh, and I guess you could say who you snitching on. I about to say this level to that question like is am I snitching on somebody I know, somebody I don't know? Am I right, say somebody you you do know but you don't like? I I know but I don't like them. Yeah. Oh well, I'm. You, uh, well, not know them, but you know of them, but you don't like them or what they're doing or whatever. Okay, how much and, and how much money I'm getting? Uh, what is your price? That's your question. <laughs> how much money am I getting? Do I gotta go testify? Like what? Probably. There's levels to this. Probably. So what about you? Oh, bro. That's a, <laughs> I mean, I came up with a question, but it, it is a damn good question if you ask me. What kind of question? It's like there's there's like different degrees to that, yo. This I not, mean, everybody got a price, so but it's not no one with. shoe fit all type situation. Like uh, yeah. that is yeah. there's a I mean there's a lot of I need some check boxes like I mean to me. Me. Was I involved with what I'm about to snitch on? Was I not involved? Did I just see it? I mean, like, like it's a whole lot. Okay, like, put yourself in his shoes. Like, you did, you knew about the Black Panthers. You didn't agree with them, you know. So if somebody asked you, like, give me a number, what it takes for you to snitch on them, and more than likely, yes, you're gonna have to go testify. But you're getting witness protection, and you could go anywhere in the world that you want. What is your price? Uh, nowadays, I mean, back then was different. Nowadays, man, I wouldn't be able to post on social media. I wouldn't be able to do anything. No, no. What you got to do? All so now, for? so now I got to disappear. Yes. I don't want to disappear. Hey, what is your price? Is I, that money worth more than? Is social media worth more than that fat ass check that you're gonna get? Is that che- what you're saying? A check that, like, what, it, what, it, like, a check that I won't be able to spend. Yes, you will. How? Yes, you will. How? They, they give you a new name, new social security. Your passport, yeah, but I still got the same face. This face is all over the internet. <laughs> like, right. and it's like, oh man, you got a twin. It just so happened she kind of snitched. So why are you over here in this country? Man, I don't think they know you in Bora Bora. I mean, <laughs> my fan base go long. Ain't that right, guys? Ain't that right? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Like, everybody got a price. Everybody got a price. You never answer your own question, bro. Uh, Cause that's a crazy question. Uh, it don't make sense. Like it does. It makes plenty of sense. How? Everybody has a price. What would it cost to snitch? And I want some of our listeners to answer this question too. So if you out there, log in to twinkleberry.com, send us an email, and uh, submit your answer. What is your price? Now nah, I'll I say know. at my age now, psh, 50 mil. So 50 mil you do what O'Neill did. 50, 50 mil? To do what he did. Yeah. 50 mil. I'm not saying I would, I would. First of all, I'm not a snitch anyway. But if somebody offered me something like that on somebody I don't like and don't agree with, like if you offer me 50 million to but go snitch, go I would, infiltrate I would, Trump and go. But that's <laughs> you know different. What I'm I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's di- like, that, but that's different. If it's if it's like somebody I don't even care about or something like that, yes. Then you know you know of them, but you don't necessarily like them or agree with the things that they're doing. But see, but in that in in the case with O'Neill, he didn't have a stand either way. He wasn't for what they were doing or against what they were doing. He didn't have a stance. Yeah. But when he started doing it, he started seeing what they were doing. Like, okay, well, this is actually and some agreed, good stuff. Yeah, and he agreed with. It. So, but for fifty mil, well, what, that would be your number. 50 mil to go snitch on somebody that I don't like and I don't don't agree with the things that they're doing. Yeah, that'll be my number. 50 mil. Mm, because 50, 50 mil, I won't have to worry about anything. I don't know, but I can't answer that. I don't right. know. 
You can answer it. No, I really throw can't. Out a number. I, I can't throw out a number because, like, like I said, there, there's a lot of stuff I would have to think about, put in perspective, like how my life going to be, like what, what guarantees am I getting. Like, it's you a lot of stuff. this protection, and that's it. Nah, but They're going to send you some small little country. I whatever. I'm, I don't and know. you're gonna live out the rest of your days out there with your cash money. And you could order anything you want off of yeah. Amazon. You go but you bitch, gonna order anything. But how, what what quality what quality of life is that if I gotta be in hiding for the rest of my life? Hey. You could go to now other maybe, countries. Now maybe Bob was you got like, a new name, new social security. You could go to other countries. You could travel. But my and stuff face like ain't that. gonna change. But, but you could never come back to where you was. My face ain't gonna change. Hey. Like and I really can't be going everywhere because um You could pay for security. Okay, and then my security taking me out. Hey. That's more. The more the more people I give access to me, now nah, I'll be paranoid. I'll be too paranoid. I, I don't know, but I, so you, I don't know. So either okay. So answer this: You got a price, or don't you? Is there no no amount of money for the, for that quality of life? It 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 have to be a situational th- like I can't really put a number. It have to be a situational thing. Like I need to know all aspects of it. Especially messing with the feds, I need to see this crap in writing. I need like five, six lawyers to take a look at this and make sure there's no way y'all gonna jit me out my money. So, I need to know what my exit date gonna be if I do do this. I need to know what kind of assistance. I, like it'll be a lot of stuff. So okay, I don't know. so hypothetically speaking, I, I, if you had, I a, probably like, won't have a number to be honest. I you, don't know. So you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't. I, say I'd that. probably be like nah. But like, like now, I'm like just figure. I just I just keep my life the way it is. Cause it's too much. Cause I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about it now. Like I'm processing everything in my head now. I'm like, I, it's too much. Cause there's too much. I'll be like, boom, boom. No, I, what Look, about this? Boom. What about that? Okay, like, picture like this. Like we got our boy Takashi Six Nine. He snitched for just to get out of jail, no money. But yeah, and he's still out here walking the streets but, in the same cities and nothing. But nobody put snitched, hands on this man. He snitched on people that was pretty much taking advantage of him. So it's not I'm, like I'm not sure who he snitched on. So, so is it's not like he was just out here just. I was on the understanding that he snitched on gang members. So his people exactly. So if you snitch, he snitched on that robbed him. Gang. But those people robbed him. Those people were setting him up. They were spending his money setting but him still, up. He is still untouched, and in, in America, in America, you see what I'm saying? He is untouched and in America, and he snitched technically for free. For free. For, for his nothing. freedom. For the freedom. Okay. For his freedom. That's a price. Hey. So that'll be your price in order not to go to jail. Anything that changes your quality of life, you not. You not snitching. I don't know, but I really like like I said, I don't know. It is it's a lot of I have to know all the all the pieces of that situation. But Okay. Well, I thought that was a damn good question. Because everybody got a price. Everybody has one. So you got another question? Yes. So um, the black community are the original victims of terrorism. A quote by Fred Hampton Jr. How do you feel about that? Yes. Yes. I'm not saying like, okay, if we going back to like slavery days, we wasn't the only people getting enslaved. You know, there was all kinds of different ethnic groups out there being enslaved, even somebody on people, which we did it also did in Africa as well. But yeah, if you want to call terrorism like a American thing, I, I believe that's an American term. And yeah, we was the first victims of terrorism. Well, I think um, more so is going into how the black communities were picked to introduce certain things to certain drugs into the community, certain um, taking away certain access to certain things, not having certain, you know, equal health care and a mess like that into different communities. So it's like, um, you know, are we were the black communities were he's right. I do agree. I definitely do agree. And, for the sake of time, we're going to hop on to this next question here. Um, so, 21, Fred devoted his life for the people. So, at such a young age, he wanted to, you know, he knew what he wanted to do. Um, yet, nowadays, I feel like we have grown people who can't even decide whether if they want to be with Keisha or Nancy. So, it's like, do you feel like now in, in our times that... Um, we 
at this age, do you feel like there's any calls worth dying for? Outside of fam- like family and kids, outside of that mess, everybody always want to say, is there any calls in this world worth dying for? That that is a good question, and that goes with my question. You know? yeah, so, uh, any calls worth dying for that's not like family or well, today we have everything. You know, it's different. This is not the. 1960s anymore. So you feel like all the problems that no. they were willing to okay no. all explain the, all the all the problems that they was going through is not it's not over with today just because it's 2021. I mean they still exist, but I think they exist more in a in a just a smaller fashion. Because back then you could get beat and killed by the cops in the middle of the street and nobody would know nothing. You know, only people still doing that, it now. Yes, they still doing it now. But now, and it's even worse. But even now, they it's on body cam. It's on camera. And cops yeah, still walking. They still, still walking. walking. Agreed. So it's but, the same thing. I, I mean, I'm not saying that's a problem that has been solved, but I I believe it's it's less. It's less. Less. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just being recorded. It's, it's no. It's just being recorded now. It's just people being more careful, being more creative. No, I don't I, feel like it's less. I, I feel like it's less because. Uh, just for instance, the re- it's the main reason why I feel like this less. My father. My father was born in 1950. So when all this was happening, he would he was a teenager. When F- Fred Hampton uh, going on in 1964 and all that stuff, he was 14 years old. So he's seen a lot of this stuff that people are going off about. About people being marginalized and the law enforcement taking matters in their own hands, burning down places, beating up people. He's seen more of that stuff than he could count. He's seen it. And if you ask him, it was like, yes, it's less today, but it's still going on. It's, so it really is nothing changed. It ain't like it stopped. It, but it, it's it, just it, less because it can't be recorded. And outrage today is a, is a serious thing. It's a serious thing. The, the issue still here, and what they did, they moved into our these privatized prisons. So yes. it's, it's nothing changed. They just re, they just they repackaging yeah. and marketing what they were doing. Yes, because no, it says that like in the Constitution, nobody's a slave unless you are a slave of the state. So unless you are a prisoner, a prisoner, then you are once you're a prisoner, you're a slave, pretty much. Technically speaking, according to the Constitution, right? So, and then black people getting a you know getting time for stuff that a white counterpart can do the exact same thing, and they're getting more time or sentence where the white person getting community service. Yes. Like it don't make the ain't nothing change. It's yes. all the same. Yes, that's it's true. all the same. It's just it's just more. It's a little bit more classy now. Well, we want to just sugarcoat it and put a little dress on it and a little bow, but it's still the exact same thing. Ain't nothing I, changed. I was, it is not changed. But it's definitely slowed down just a little bit. I ain't not to slow down. You don't think it's slowed down? I don't think that's slowed well, down. I, I'm, I'm saying they used to in the street every day, multiple times a day, people was getting beat out in the streets. Now it's it's a little bit further in between. Now that uh, it doesn't happen every day, it doesn't. That's that's just the truth. Because they lock these boys up and they put them in jail. Yes. Yes, they revamped them like it. animals. They revamped it. So it's not the exact same thing that was going on in the 60s. They revamped it, repackaged it, and now it's just something totally different. It's just something totally different. It's something it's something new. The 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 crimes that are being committed against black people has evolved. It's not the same as the, as the 60s. That's all I'm saying. It's just not the same as the 60s. It just evolved into something else. More t- they try to keep it under wraps. I seen like memes and stuff like that on on the internet. It was a white person and a black person got a uh, same exact crime. White person got probation. The uh the black person got years in prison. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So so tell me so tell me what's the difference? What's the difference between the sixties and now? That stuff still happened then. That well, well that's the judicial system. I, I was talking about just police out there in the streets. That's on to a different too. So uh, the judicial system has not uh, not really changed that much because they still, if you black, they'll try to punish you into the full extent of the law. But as far as pe- like people getting, like the police, what, what are we saying with that relates to the movie? 
they're not getting beat up in the streets like that every day. Okay. I mean, let's be for real. The laws was not written to protect black people. No, it wasn't. It wasn't at all. The Constitution was written while people were still slaves. That's what I'm saying. So it's like none of this is for us. This mess need to be. We need to re. It need to be redesigned to fit to the inclusion of all people. Like, how can we? How are we adopting? How are we still living by something that was written when we weren't even considered people? Yeah, it, de- it definitely needs to be updated. And I, I hear a lot of, especially like comedians, like it was like y'all haven't wrote wrote any new shit. Like this stuff was written how many years ago? Y'all didn't write nothing new, nothing. So. That brings me to my that question brings me to my next question. Are there are there any people that you think that would die for something that's bigger than itself today? If it's if they see something that's bigger than themselves, how many people you think will actually like die for it? Because me personally, I don't think anybody would die for anything that's big uh, that's bigger than itself today. I mean, you got people out there protesting, and you got people out here doing this and doing that. But how many of them will die, give up their life for that cause that's bigger than themselves? And I think that number, I'm not saying it's none, but I think it's very small. Yeah, I, yeah, I definitely think so. Um, I don't, I don't see it. Like nowadays we, we are a selfish bunch or we feel like there's other ways of getting things accomplished and having to pay the ultimate price death, you know? But it's like we don't, you know, people ain't riding like they used to ride back then. Like I, I'm not gonna say we got soft as a, you know, as a race, no, but as a, not not as a race, but as people, people, people in general. I'm talking about people of every color got soft. Every single color got soft. With technology, just some of the conveniences that we have today, you know, everything, everything we have gotten soft. Well, I guess we've realized now that we, it's, I don't know, it's like people died for the cause now. I, I'm not going to say you don't need to die for certain things, but it's, I don't know, like, it's just crazy the world we live in now. I mean, just think of like, I think I, uh, I got, I wish I could get this right. I'm going to try to, I might butcher it. But if there are more millionaires being made today than there ever lived in like the early 1900s. Oh, I can believe it because you two making a lot of people rich, bro. Yeah. I mean, there are more millionaires being made in one single day than they ever lived in the early 1900s, you know? So I think this, uh, if we, we're spoiled. Just straight up. Straight up and down, we're spoiled. Struggle, and we things comes too easy. Struggling is a fashion statement, it seems these days. Yeah. Like, okay, here's here's this. Let's hop on this. Okay, I'm bored. Something else just came out. Oh, let's hop on that. Oh, what the Kardashian doing? Okay, never mind. Like, we, back then, these people were more focused. Like, they... They had a mission. They, had they did, to do. and 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 trust me, the things they did, they didn't look them. People who lost their lives, like it did help, cause there is some change, like you know what yeah. I mean. But it's just nowadays, I just feel like some a lot of people feel like they're good already, but I don't know. Yeah, we spoiled, but anyway, lesson, blessing, curse, real quick. Um, I will say lesson. Yeah, I'll say lesson to this. This movie taught me a lot of things that I didn't really know. I didn't know anything about Fred Hampton until this movie. But that concludes our episode for this week. Tune in next week. Join us on TorqueBear.com. Comment, uh, subscribe, everything. We on YouTube now, so go check us out. Uh, DJ Twin 2 on IG and also TorqueBear on IG. And we'll see y'all next week. Peace.